The Slate 7 dropped in May of 2025, and when I reviewed it back in April, I praised this blazing fast WireGuard performance and top tier Wi-Fi speeds. But it had one major flaw that held it back from being the perfect travel router. That flaw, GeoINet and the latest firmware 473 has fixed it. In this video, I'll break down why the latest firmware update changes everything. I'll show you exactly when to upgrade, what new features you'll unlock, and give you my current go-to setup for both the server and the travel router display. Let's get it. One of the best features that was introduced in the Slate 7 is the touch panel display. The touch panel display is a departure from the previous LED status light on the front of the previous VPN travel routers that either blinked or was solid. Now we have a full colored interactive touchscreen display that gives us a lot of options from connecting to wireless networks of the router to disabling the VPN connection. Herein lies the major flaw that I pointed out back in my review in April. When the Slate 7 was first launched with the firmware 470, anybody with physical access to the device could connect via a QR code to the wireless network and modify critical settings like turning off the VPN. Well, that flaw has been fixed with firmware 473. Now you have several options in the new version for controlling how the touch panel display works on the Slate 7. The first option, which is the most useful, is a four digit pin code. You can now set a four digit pin to prevent access to the touch panel display altogether. This effectively will lock the display. Secondly, you have the option to completely customize the display to only allow certain features to be controlled from the touch panel. This includes the ability to disable Wi-Fi spectrums like the 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, or the MLO Wi-Fi signals. Furthermore, you can also remove the option of configuring the WireGuard or OpenVPN configurations so that you never accidentally turn off the VPN from the touch panel display. These settings definitely fix two of the major issues that I pointed out in my previous review. Now, for my clients that I set up, I've been using these features in slightly different ways for both the client and the server route. Got a question about VPNs and remote work, but you're not ready to book a full consultation? No worries. Now you can make me an offer for a 15-minute session using the OfferTime.app. If your offer meets the session minimum and I'm available, we'll get you scheduled. For a limited time, the first three offers that meet the minimum are auto-accepted. So don't wait. Make your offer right now and get the clarity you need. Click the link below in the description. So for both the travel and the server routers, I've enabled the pin feature when the client has two Slate 7 VPN travel routers. However, for the server routers, once it's fully configured and the VPN is fully up and running, I'll disable all the Wi-Fi signals to prevent them from broadcasting a Wi-Fi connection and to prevent possible interference with the existing home Wi-Fi network. No one's gonna be at the home location using the Wi-Fi of the server device. Therefore, there's no need to have Wi-Fi signals broadcasting. And if you need to re-enable those Wi-Fi signals, you can do that by putting in your pin and going into the touch panel display and re-enable them. Now for the travel router, I disabled the ability to modify the WireGuard configuration from the touch panel. However, I leave the ability to configure the Wi-Fi networks enabled. There are times where you may be working right beside the Slate 7 VPN travel router. And in that situation, you may only need the five gigahertz spectrum for speed. So it's possible to disable the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and the MLO spectrum if you don't have Wi-Fi 7 enabled devices like an iPhone 16 Pro Max. So who should upgrade? Well, I normally don't recommend you upgrade just for the sake of upgrading. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But if you have a Slate 7 that's shipped with 470, I definitely recommend you upgrade to 473. The features in this version definitely qualify as a reason to upgrade. If you didn't catch the previous review where I went through all the details of this router, check it out over here. And until next time, Mexiplans Monty, move!